Now there are a fee, there are two prayers in the book of Ephesians, and I believe now this next part is my personal opinion. It is my opinion that about ninety to ninety five percent of the trouble that you go through can be solved by praying one of these two prayers. Oftentimes what happens, and I kind of alluded to this last week and I didn't go into the detail that I that I meant to. Oftentimes what happens is we react to something by thinking that prayer is the answer. Now, now listen, let me stop right here. Is prayer important? Absolutely prayer is important. Don't go out of here saying, Pastor Seymour said he didn't believe in prayer. That, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, is oftentimes when we are faced with situations, with circumstances, with challenges that come in our life, our reaction is to pray or to get other people to pray, get the prayer chain going, all kinds of stuff like that. If you'll notice, whenever Jesus, and, and he is a really good person to patter our lives after, you look at the way that Jesus ministered. Because the church has been commissioned to do those works. And we've talked about this uh, in depth over the last several weeks. Actually, the last couple of three months. And so what happens is, is when we're faced with a challenge in our life, we, we, our reaction oftentimes is, well, I need to pray about this. Prayer is really important. But oftentimes what we miss is, it's not prayer that needs to, be, to handle the situation. It's us standing in authority and decreeing something and commanding something to happen. When Jesus went into cities and there were people that would come up to him with a woman with issue of blood. Y'all remember the woman with issue of blood? Mark chapter 5. She came in and she said, if I can just but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And so she comes through the press behind. Remember, Jesus was a rock star. There were people all around him, thronging him everywhere he went. This woman pushes through all of that in a weakened condition, reaches out and touches the hem of his garment. And Jesus stops. And he turns around and he said, somebody touch me. And they said, Master, come on, you've got to be kidding. There are people here. Of course somebody touched you. We, we, we've lost Nathaniel three times. He's gotten knocked down. We're, matter of fact, we're not even sure where he is right now. They, he said, no, 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 no. Somebody touched me. I felt, King James Bible says, I felt virtue go out of me. That word virtue is the word power, dunamis, that we talked about last week. The word dunamis. He said, I felt power go out. Now, that woman, when she came into him and touched him, she didn't ask for prayer. Jesus didn't say, let's all just join hands right now together, sing Michael, row your boat ashore, kumbaya, and, would you, and, and light a few candles, and, and, and this will work. That isn't what happened. There was, matter of fact, Jesus didn't pray for the woman at all. He, she came in, and, and, it, and by her faith, matter of fact, he said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. So whenever people were brought to Jesus, he didn't have a prayer meeting. He commanded something to happen. Rise up, or right, take your bed and walk. Go show yourself to the priests. Daughter, your sins are forgiven. He, he gave commands. That is, that is what the way that we walk as believers in authority. Now then. Where prayer comes in, prayer is our communication and fellowship with the Father. That's that intimate time of building relationship. That's that intimate time of just spending time with the creator of the universe, praising him and thanking him for the, thing that, the things that he has done just because he's God, and that's praise. And then thanksgiving are for the specific things he's done for you. Prayer builds that relationship and that intimacy that helps you go out and do these other things that I'm talking about. But oftentimes in believers' lives, when sickness is concerned, where lack or poverty is concerned, the thing that is necessary is standing on the Word, believing it in your heart, and saying it with your mouth, giving voice to something. Remember, faith lives in two places. It lives in your heart and in your mouth. You have to give voice to what it is that you're believing. Isn't that the way you get saved? Romans 10, 9 and 10, you believe in your heart that God uh, has raised Jesus from the dead, and you confess, you give voice to it. 
you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Well, that it, the Bible refers to that as a confession, we substitute the word prayer, of faith. That's the way that the prayer of faith or confession of faith operates. That's the same whether it's in salvation for you to become born again, or that's the same where healing is concerned. That is where that is used. 